John 46 responding. Can you advise the attack again? Engine 14, rescue 14, engine 12, rescue 12, engine 43, hazmat 16, ladder 47, squad 5, tanker 4, tanker 9, engine 16, attention battalion 1, battalion 2, safety 1, industrial fire, BP gas station explosion, 215 State Road 16, Cross Street Masters Drive, all units respond on channel 2, channel 2. A scene that, that people probably remember a few years back was BP station fire over on State Road 16 uh, where we really taxed uh, the system. It was very challenging to, to communicate with our crews. We need some more LDH. Can you advise us the city can respond down here? Can you anybody here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we could not hear uh, the crews effectively. We ended up resorting to um, utilizing runners and that kind of thing um, to get messages to crews at various uh, in various areas around that scene. Engine 12 to engine 14, off You can be on the scene of an incident and not talk to the rescue unit or the fire department 75 yards away from us. We could be in a building in the middle of a search for a suspect and we get the suspect cornered and we need, but we need something brought into us. We couldn't talk to the deputies outside. 26, let me check the deal. 37, 34, 37, 37, 37, The first person to give us a heads up that we, we had a problem was the Fire chief at that time, Bobby Hall, and the federal government was contemplating a mandate to move to what they call narrow banding. The problem for us was is that while some modern equipment could be narrow banded, the stuff that we had was pretty archaic and it was impossible for it to meet the new standards. Historically, we really started in, in uh, 2002. Uh, we had uh, Motorola come in and do a evaluation of our current radio system and in 2004 we hired RCC consultants uh, from the Tallahassee office, formed a users group of all agencies that could be involved in the system which includes all your public safety but includes road and bridge, school board, school buses, uh, anybody that could use the system, animal control, all of those type of, of agencies on top of the public safety agencies and started developing the uh, the system as well as doing, they did an independent evaluation of our current system. Um, they made their first presentation to the Board of County Commissioners in January of 2005. Our county commissioners that had to ultimately vote on this, I think they displayed a tremendous amount of political courage to do it. Uh, if I remember it was an election year and it required some additional funding or taxing to do it and you know they stood up and they did the right thing and I I have always given them a tremendous amount of credit for doing that. The system is a federal mandate, as you've indicated, from the FCC, and it has to be replaced by January 1, 2013. That's 17 months from now. I don't think we have any question that that has to be done. This isn't just a toy, if you will, for the firefighters or the police officers. We have kids in schools, a lot of kids, and those kids and the individuals in those schools have to be contacted. A resource officer working in one of these hardened schools cannot communicate with the dispatch in some occasions because their system will not allow them to. Anyone out there that have kids in these schools, I'm sure that you want to make sure that your kids are taken care of. We have a 10-year-old communication system. It is still functioning, but it can't function under the uh, narrow banning. And I will support because I want to protect the people that are out there protecting the citizens because if they're not there, you're not going to have protection. Then I think if we expect them to put themselves out there with a minimum amount of staffing, that we need to leverage them with good equipment. Day to day, we're putting these guys in difficult, and gals in difficult situations where on a back county road doing a traffic stop where they're outnumbered, they don't have contact with dispatch or they go into a house where there's a domestic disturbance, they're significantly outnumbered, and they better pray that everything goes well because they can't get back up. They don't have comms with dispatch. And the same applies to our fire rescue personnel on a day-to-day -day basis. They deserve better than that. Fortunately, we had a county commission that showed a lot of statesmanship uh, 
when we were getting hammered on a weekly basis over this, uh, and people telling us that they were experts and that the system wouldn't even work once we got it in place, uh, the county commission stood in there and they, they got this thing done and they gave something to the community that's going to serve it well for probably 30 years or more. Okay, that's going to be our priority right now. This thing is about a block long. It's a whole complex back here. Um, we're trying to figure out how we can get another line on the very east end of this. We've had, since the system went live, we've had um, several calls that have uh, tested it. Recently, we had uh, some fires that we helped out on with St. Augustine City Fire Department. Four structure fires within about a two hour period that really tested the, the system as far as being able to move crews onto multiple tactical frequencies so they could focus on the, the incident that they were dealing with. They didn't have to worry about hearing somebody else's transmissions and getting confused about which you know, commander was talking to which crew. So, um, you know, obviously we're all about time and as far as getting our units there quickly to take care of, you know, whatever situations at hand, being able to get units there quickly to those scenes um, and efficiently and effectively and, and deal with the call is, uh, is, is definitely taking better care of the public and again taking care of our responders and giving them the tools that they need to do their job. Not only was it the right thing to do, but it, it really showed how government should work. When you have all these different entities that came together, all of our destinations are the same and that's to provide service for our constituents. Everybody just rolled their sleeves up and said, we got to make this happen. And everybody had a role in it. When government can do those things and not worrying about who gets the credit, good things can happen. And this is a great example of it.